Welcome everyone to the Better Love Movement podcast, where you will finally learn how to intentionally do dating and relationships right. My name is Anita Stoudmeyer, and I'm a licensed professional therapist and your personal love mentor. I've worked with thousands of singles and couples, giving them the skills needed to attract and keep the amazing love they desire. It's my heart's work to help people to get the skills needed to not only become the very best versions of themselves, but to help them grow and evolve emotionally and relationally. You can absolutely have the romantic relationship of your dreams. Come and let me show you how. Hello, everyone, and welcome again this week to the Better Love Movement podcast. We are back again. I am in episode number 116. Can you believe it? We're 116 episodes in. And this week, our episode is entitled Loving Through Pain and Insecurities. So today, I am joined by Christopher Allen. He is the author of the book, open wounds. Let me tell you a little bit about Christopher. So Christopher Allen is a notary, an author, a publisher, producer, co-host, actor, model, speaker, and mentor, dedicating many of his works and time to inspire personal growth, healthy relationships, community, fatherhood, mindfulness, self-worth, and inner healing. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely appreciate you, uh, Anita, for having me on your uh, podcast this evening. Thank you. And again, I was very excited because, you know, again, um, love of relationships, uh, that's what's going to get us through. Yes, that's right. That's right. So I found you, I found you through Instagram and I was actually interested in interviewing you in the month of January. That is when I normally have man crush month. So every January, I interview nothing but men in the space of whether they're an author or an influencer or another podcast host. Um, I interview nothing but men and we like to get a man's perspective on dating, on relationships, on masculinity, healthy masculinity, femininity. What does femininity look like to them? And so unfortunately all my spots got full but I still wanted to have you on the show. I wanted to reach out to you and have you on the show after I learned about your book, Open Wounds. And um, I, I was hoping that that would provide some perspective to my lady listeners about the pain and insecurities of men and how they handle them. So tell me a little bit more about the book that you wrote. Now, um, just speaking in regards to the book that I wrote, just in regards to the whole thing, uh, Open Wounds is a stoic memoir, mm-hmm. um, meaning uh, that what I wrote is a combination of stories and poetry combined together just to bring along that little extra flavor and, and taste to the book. Um, and the book is really about um, learning to love and accept yourself. Um, despite your personal issues, your life challenges, um, and how the world perceives you. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's really about being flexible in your belief systems, um, being able to grow and develop, but be firm in your character, but also just be malleable enough that you're able to change for the better, better and navigate through life a little better through, through life lessons. Okay. That's primarily uh, what it's about. And Mm -hmm. um, Anita, uh, the viewers in is what I did was I shared my struggles dealing with, um, you know, um, most of us have some connection or whether we're spiritual or we believe in God, religion, things of that nature. And I was expressing just my, um, uh, my contempt with God at a certain point in time, religion, um, the education system, racism. Um, And we talked tonight, you know, doing the getting to love and relationships, you know, my trust Mm -hmm. issues that develop, um, my void, you know, developed through uh, father uh, abandonment, biological father abandonment, uh, seeing domestic violence, Mm -hmm. um, alcohol abuse, and different things that took place um, in my life. And um, 
bullying, grieving, death, um, you know, societal behavior. So anger issues, um, suicidal, and all those things, how it played into uh, loving through pain and insecurities. And, and it's tough. Mm. Okay. And I noticed that as I was reading um, that that style that you have, where like you said, it's part poetry, part storytelling. And I noticed kind of uh, at the end of most of the chapters, there's kind of like this moral of the story. So you give, yeah. you know, the, the, what the lesson was that was learned through that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, Tell me a little bit about how it felt to recount some of those really difficult parts of your life for the reader. What were some of the hardest parts of your story to tell? And um, one of the things that I do every now and again, um, especially when I was writing, is going back to that moment in time and getting back in touch with those memories to mm. bring out the most transparent, um, the most connective things that I could possibly have to put to get someone to understand exactly what I was going through at that time in that moment. And um, it, I would say up till, 10, up till maybe eight to 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, I was still going through a lot of those things and just reconnecting and reading. And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of tough for me at first, but, mm -hmm. you know, the last eight to 10 years, like I've been, great uh, it, it's um i feel like it's a privilege to be able to share and tell those stories so those who are going through those things right now um you know just knowing that they don't have to stay there mm. you know it's a choice mm. um it's, it's a choice so it's just uh, one of those things that i was able to connect with just to really pull out that information and give you blow by blow blow account and how i really felt and I really try to capture that uh, in my in my poetry and my story. Right. And I like what you said about it's a choice. One of the things that I believe is so therapeutic about writing your story or writing about these these memories or these things that happened in your past is um, it does help you to have a little bit of objectivity. Like you can, you can write it all out. You can remember where you were then. And then you can also say, wow, I'm not there now. Like that came a long way. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. So I think that is, is very therapeutic. Um, and like you said, if you're writing to a person who maybe they are kind of still there, they are still there, like in those spaces where you were, and to see how far you've come, maybe they can say, you know, I can get there too. Oh, absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, this, I guess just being able to uh, reflect uh, on those two is um, knowing in your reflection that there's a, it's a cycle that mm -hmm. you continually go going through. When are you going to get off that hamster? Right. You know? Um, and if you don't get off, of course, you can continue to go through the same things over and over and over and over again. So, mm -hmm. um, just hope and realization that they're able to, um, move and, you know, kind of get through those type of things. And, um, you know, just going back to your, um, to one of your questions, you know, like what was really the hardest things for me to go through was, um, I just think the hardest thing for me was actually dealing with the aspect that how did I let this happen and why did I let this happen? Mm. And you're looking at like, I'm better than that. Right. But in reality, we, we can say that we are, but in reality, we're not. And, um, you know, I think just dealing with that fact of it, you know, um, it kept me where I was a little bit longer. Then I was like, I'm not going to stop asking why and how mm -hmm. and just move past it. Yep. There's, there's, you know, why am I going to continue to hug a cactus? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so you wrote this book for men and young men. What do you hope they'll take away from reading it? What are some of the life lessons that you have for them? Um, I think... You know, one of the things uh, that I really, you know, as far as the men are concerned, is that um, I want them to know that, first and foremost, we're, we're not perfect. 
We're never going to be perfect. Our relationships are not going to be perfect. But you do have a choice of behaving better, mm-hmm. being more accountable for the decisions that you make in life, in your life, whether um, you know you decide to get education, whether you decide to just um, get a job, or you decide to you know open a business, whatever that is that you do in life, even your relationships, um, learning to love yourself, accept yourself. Um, and, you know, just know when you choose to love yourself better, mm-hmm. you would definitely um, be, you know, when you, and I'm going to say to change your perspective about yourself and your life. Because mm-hmm. once you're able to do that, everything else will kind of fall in place, you know, if, if you're doing the right things. Um, but, you know, you just can't say it and talk about it. Yeah, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, you have to be about it with right. every aspect of your being get up the next day and choose like you know um what i've done in the past doesn't define you right does not define who you are you can get up and become um and you know just strive every day to be the better person that you are um, you know just to be a better man to be a better person right um and those are some of the things that i really want to relate to them that you know um just staying stuck in that mud Ain't nothing there. <laughs> yeah. Well, w- my favorite phrase, and I say this all the time in my therapy practice, so people who know me know this phrase well, and uh, in my coaching clients too, I say the best thing about the past is that it's over. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I like say that, that a high. thousand <laughs> times a week, which is it's over, right? And uh, yeah. we can make a choice to uh, ruminate or recount it. And, and really we're doing ourselves a disservice because we're reliving it. Like we're re-traumatizing yeah. ourselves. Like, why would we do that? Right. It's over. And it's done. Uh, that's it. And now I get to move forward. I get to do something different. And I encourage people every day to do that. Like it's done. It's a done deal. So let's talk a little bit about dating or relationships um, and how some of this, the loving through the pain and insecurities affected your relationships. Tell me a little mm. bit about that. Um, wow. <laughs> First, um, I just want to say through my father, my fatherhood abandonment mm. uh, as a child. Um, I'm just saying uh, my relationships with specific types of figures, like like authority figures, Um, my relationship with um, men, like I didn't trust them, Mm. didn't care much for them. Um, And I had a lot of anger and animosity pent up inside. So my relationship with them were um, not, they were very aggressive, not as good. Mm -hmm. Um, But for those that I really cared about and loved, I didn't exhibit those behaviors towards those people. But anybody else on the outside of that space of that circle, it was like, um, but as far as the relationship with um, women, um, dealing with that void, that hurt and pain of abandonment, mm. um, I, I was overly sensitive to, uh, let's just say on my exterior, I mm-hmm. seemed calm and cool, collective about it. But on the inside, I, you know, I was going through it. Mm-hmm. Overly sensitive to rejection mm-hmm. um, or not getting what I wanted, um, you know, in a relationship or I was trying to acquire a relationship. Um, I became vindictive. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, you know, you're not going to give me what I need or what I want, then I'm going to go out and find it elsewhere. Right. However that is, whether you know or not, mm-hmm. That, that's it's just too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do me. And um, that's a relationship killer. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Like, yeah. yeah you selfishness can't. and pride. I always yeah. tell, tell people those two things will kill your relationship. <laughs> and you up. Yep. And then after the fact, you're even going through the, you know, going through the aspect of hurting the pain of the separation. Mm. The guilt of knowing that you caused probably this issue or somebody else caused this to you. And, um, you know, you deal with the separation of um, the, your bond.
bond with the person, mm -hmm. um, your, the physical connection that you had with that person. So it, it goes deep. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, you know, if this is what you're doing in your relationships, I just suggest stop because you're setting yourself up for more pain and disappointment. Um, talk about filling the void. Mm -hmm. um, for many years, the void that was in my life, um, dealing with my not have my biological father present present in my life, it mm -hmm. caused um, I try to fill it by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. that, it didn't matter. I mean, if somebody deserved your time or not, um, I was getting given any and every opportunity for somebody to fill that space of that void. Right. Um, which is not good because, again, I'm not protecting my stuff. I'm not protecting my heart. I'm not protecting me as an individual. Right. So it's like I'm throwing myself out there to, to the slaughter. You know, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm the lamb. They throw me to the lions, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I also learned over a period of time, and this is just, again, my vindictiveness, my pride, my ego. Uh, when I learned how to, uh, when I saw that women were attracted to money, material, shiny mm. things, jewelry, cars, money, you know, um, a bad boy a reputation. Mm. Um, um, and, you know, you know, just being, you know, great at sex or whatever that is, I use those things against them. And, you know, when I wasn't ready to deal with them anymore, if I got tired of them or they wasn't doing what I wanted them to do, uh, you know, I just, you know, I, I, I wish I had a piece of paper right now, yeah. but I would just show you how to, matter of fact, give me one second. Okay. <laughs> Ladies, fellas, if I'm lying, tell me. This is what y'all do when y'all done dealing when you're not entertained anymore with mm -hmm. the person that's in your life or who you're dealing with, or you mm -hmm. have another option, you find it. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yep. what's happening. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things too that I would just say when you're dealing with that void, now, you know, the one thing that men do and maybe, uh, well, I'm going to say ladies do it as well, Ms. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is that, you know, when we have bad breakups or something happens, what's the first thing that, that you know, we most likely do is, you know, to fill that space for that void or to try to eliminate that pain. Mm -hmm. And that is go find somebody else. Right. Go find somebody else of interest or get into another relationship or go be with somebody else. And then, you know, as a, <laughs> a revenge tactic, you know, you might just been over the relationship a week or less. And, yep. you know, now you got somebody else on your arm. Or now right. you're taking pictures. And, you know, you know what I'm doing. So, But I, I want like, you to oh. express to ladies, because this is something I have been telling ladies for years. And I, mm -hmm. I figured it out. But for some reason, women have not figured this out. I want you to express to them. And you're a guy the lack of genuineness, like when they see mm -hmm. their guy out with someone else after a week or two or a month of the breakup, that that's really a sign of his pain. Like mm -hmm. that's not a sign of, oh, I meant nothing. Oh, he's just over me that quickly. No, that's a sign of his pain. That's a sign of, like you said, filling the void. Oh, absolutely. And um, it's true. Yep. And then <laughs> whether you out with somebody else and I'm, I've been in this situation, been out to dinner with somebody, uh, person, you know, we, we have had a bread big breakup or mm -hmm. uh, we may have some miscommunications in our friendship or mm -hmm. friends with benefits shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> situation mm -hmm. shit, right? Yep. I'm out with somebody and next thing I know, you know, my phone blowing up like, oh, you out with such a, such a, such a. like, nah, we, we ain't together no more. Remember, remember, right? You know, why are you calling me? You out with somebody else, mm -hmm. so that this is like the whole situation is not completely done or hasn't been resolved. So, before you move on to something else, resolve what you have, right? And that may take a little longer. And we talk about emotions, um, and this this is I think this is probably the most uh, critical thing that 
uh, men and women go through is that um, when we're going through something temporarily, whether it's painful, it's hurt, somebody disappoints you, mm-hmm. um, you give it a couple of days later, you, you might not feel the same as you did in that moment. Right. There might have been some validity behind that or something, you know, there could have been a piece that you missed because you wasn't communicating or you wasn't listening. Um, and because, you know, you know how we do when, you know, we're, we're in a bad place. Right. T- temper tantrum right. city almost, and you're not listening to anything. Yeah. So sometimes you go on through this and you and you really speak bad about speak bad to the other person to talk about that other person like they just the worst things and I don't know. Mm. But the worst thing. Right. The worst thing since the attention uh invention of the atomic bomb, right? Right, right. They're the worst in and you really go off on them, mm. separate yourself from them. And a couple of days later, you might not be feeling that way no more. Right. You was like, I didn't understand why I did this, why I said that. I was just mad. But you got to understand that when you go to these places and you're feeling it, sometimes it's just best to sit down and be quiet. Right. Doesn't matter if you cry or whatever that is, go somewhere and be silent and sit still for a mm-hmm. minute. Because if you, um, when you do something to somebody else in predictiveness or whether you're doing it through um, uh, you're going through a verbal confrontation when you throw those words out there remember that your words that you say to the person even in anger your upsetness yeah. whatever that may be it's, those are like caliber bullets going through your body yep. it's, shrap- it's like shrap- the bullets sit on a landmine and you can't take that back that's it can't take it back that's it and and this is where you know i teach people about emotional regulation this is where emotional regulation comes in where that's going to tell us our level of maturity is how well we regulate ourselves emotionally so you know, I got 50 year olds that are still having those temper tantrums. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, you're too old for this. You got to learn how to yeah. regulate yourself a little better because you are so Absolutely. right. You're so right. Wow. Well, um, I got a copy of the book. I want my listeners, um, I want to encourage them to check this book out. Um, thank you so much, Christopher, for doing the show today. I so appreciate you. Um, tell my listeners where they can connect with you, where they can get a copy of your book. All right. Um, you can uh, connect with me um, on Instagram. Uh, I have an account for the issues of men uh, where, uh, you know, we discuss on the platform um, things that men are experiencing or going through, but we're not actually willing to admit or address it openly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I do have that platform. Um, again, you can connect with me on Instagram. Um, there, um, I do have a YouTube page mm. as well with okay. videos for the issues of men. So definitely go there, subscribe, um, like the videos. If there, you want to make any comments, be free to have any comments. If you would like to um, be a guest on the show, or um, you know, if you would have something that you would like me to discuss or talk about on the show, uh, just email me at the issues of men at gmail dot com. Awesome. Um, in addition to that. Um, again, I'm an author. Um, everything that you would like to know about me as an author, who, where I came from, things of that nature, all my books, my upcoming books, um, my notary service, um, learn more about essential publishing. I operate a publishing company. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to uh, www.authorchrisallen.com and uh, you will be able to purchase uh, ebooks and um, physical copies of the book there as well. And um, again, um, I just encourage you, just go check out the website. Uh, see if it's something that you would like to purchase. We have an adult version and a youth version. Okay. And uh, all, although my book is just in regards to um, a memoir about my personal life, a lot of these ex- uh, experiences that I've had are very relatable. Mm-hmm. But what's going on, if you haven't been able to address anything that's going on with you now and you're wondering why possibly why I'm not why I can't keep a man or mm. uh, a gentleman like why I can't keep a female in my life you will definitely see some of the um 
the broken relationships and bad behaviors and uh, different things that I had that I've experienced that I've learned for a period of time. And, um, you know, listen, go check it out. It's, it's definitely worth your while to do so. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. So you all know how we do. If we have a guest on the show, uh, I want you to check out, I'm going to put all of this information in the show notes. So it's going to be under the YouTube video. It's going to be on all the podcast platforms. I put all of the links uh, in the show notes because I want you to go and support the people who are on the show. I've gotten such amazing feedback from uh, previous guests talking about all the folks who, you know, subscribe to their channel or who listen to their podcast or purchase their products. So please, please, please support my guest on the show today. Thank you so much, Christopher, for joining me. Um, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, please do so now. We are on all the streaming podcast services, all the platforms. You can also watch the video version of the podcast on YouTube. Consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and click that bell icon to get notified because every Monday morning, a new YouTube video gets uploaded to the channel. If you have a question that you want answered on the podcast, feel free to send it to me at info at betterlovemovement.com. You can also check out my website, www.betterlovemovement.com for the brand new book that just came out on March 1st. Um, you can also find all of my apparel products. You can find all of my digital products. Um, what else is there? I mean, what is not there? All of the events that I have throughout the month. So please check out my website. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And as always, stay open to love. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. If you are enjoying this podcast, please leave me a five-star rating and review. Your ratings and reviews help me to continue to bring you more great content. Head on over to YouTube and check out the Better Love Movement channel. There's more video content there and you can subscribe to be notified when a new video is posted. If you have a question that you would like to have answered on the podcast or in a YouTube video, please send it to me at info at betterlovemovement.com. You can also connect with me directly on the Magnify app to have your dating and relationship questions answered. That's M-A-G-N-I-F-I, and it's available on iOS and Android. You get your first five minutes for free. So give me a call and let's chat. 303-626-6000.